Hey, Maria, do you know how to connect these little wires? No, sorry. Okay, could you hand me the book that says something about DIY lamps? Yeah. Here you go. Huh? So this guy here in the introduction was looking for a short, quick answer. And sometimes we shouldn't write these articles. If it can be fully satisfied with a featured snippet or just one or two lines, a very short paragraph, many times people will not have to click past that featured snippet up there. But for this query here, he was looking for which wire to put where. So it was not really a yes, no question. There's definitely more to it, even though it was still a short answer he was looking for. So what you can do with a topic like that is to write a pretty good lengthy article. And then when you're done with it, you've gone over all the different ways you can connect these wires together or whatnot. Then you can finish off with the perfect answer at the top that answers exactly what he needs. So you give him that right there at the top of the article, maybe with a bulleted list or a little table or whatever he's looking for in the easiest way possible to make it really easy for somebody to grab this information. And then afterward, you can go into all the details about it because somebody might be looking for that short answer, but somebody else might not be hanging there uh, with his fingers uh, trying to connect the wires. He might be sitting behind the desk or in the sofa, really trying to educate himself on the matter. So those are two different intentions. Those are two different search intent behind the same query. And when you can meet both, you'll have an article that will rank very well across a lot of searches. And Google will test you for more search phrases as they see more and more people staying on your article as they land there, regardless of whether they are hanging up there or sitting on the sofa. And I really want to toot this horn a little more about search intent. I don't think I can emphasize enough how important I think this is for SEO now and moving forward. It's not anymore just about having the right synonyms and words on the page. A lot of people will tell you that and a lot of videos will tell you that, that it's just about Google connecting words and trying to decipher what it's about. And that's probably how Google works. But when you look into what Google tells us about how they rank us in search, we see what they want to do. And that's what they are constantly trying to get to with all these core updates. And if anybody or any company can figure out what an article is actually about, that would be Google, right? So you need to focus on what should be in the article if you were reading that article yourself or you were Googling that phrase. That also means that you should put less emphasis on just adding synonyms and trying to add all these keywords or whatever, or try to mimic what else is ranking up there already, because there's a very high chance that you can create something much, much better. So before we move on here and I show you exactly how long I believe an article should be today and we'll look at the actual numbers, I wanna share a very good tip with you that has worked so well for me. And it's about not giving your writers or even yourself a fixed word count. I see so many bloggers and YouTubers and courses tell you you need to write this amount of words or this amount of words. Don't think about it like that. You need to give your writer or yourself an interval. For example, many of my articles, I will tell the writer to write between 1200 or 1500 words, for example. That gives him a little wiggle room there of three, 400 words. So whenever he think he's done with it, that means that he can be done with it if it's between this lower and upper number. So what this does, it will get rid of a lot of fluff because somebody needs to meet that magic word count. They need to take it all the way to 1700 words or 2500 words or whatever that number is. So you will definitely get better content from doing it this way. And when you're working with external writers, it's important for them to have a list of topics they can grab afterward, because otherwise they'll probably try to crank it all the way up to that upper limit just to make as much money as possible if you're paying them by the word, which I think you should. So whenever they can finish the article and just grab the next one, that means they can still make more money. And of course, that's what the writer is there for. They're writing content to make money, right? So have a steady queue of articles lined up that they can always grab the next one whenever they're done with it so they don't have to add fluff to get to that upper 
limit word count in order to make as much money as possible. I hope you get the point here because it's really just about allowing the writer to be done with the article when it's done, when it's completely covered. But I still think you should give him a word count. So that's why I give this lower and upper limit. So that will reduce so much fluff in your articles. So now let's talk about how long articles should actually be. And I'd say the vast majority, 80 or even 90% maybe of the content going up across my portfolio of sites is between 1300 to 1800 words. So I very rarely go higher than 3000 words. I just don't think it's worth it. I don't think anybody wants to read such a long article. And the thing is, it's very risky if you write three, four, five thousand words because it's a huge expense if you're paying somebody to write this article that might or might not work in search. Or if you're writing it yourself, same thing. You could have produced three articles of around 14 to 1700 words, maybe. So that's what I do. I would rather have more articles at around that word count than having these huge articles that few people want to read. If you look at go downsize, for example, one of my sites, it's approaching a thousand articles now. You will find very few articles that have more than a couple of thousand words in them. But I will also say for the lower limit, I wouldn't go shorter than a thousand words. And it's not because it's some magic number that you cannot rank in Google or that everybody ranking there on number one is that this or that long. It's just because I've found that with my writers and with my editors, over time, it's very rare that we can cover a topic well if we are writing less than a thousand words. So you might be thinking now that 1400 or 1700 words is a huge accomplishment, something you could never write. But then you really need to see this video that I put out a couple of weeks ago. I put so much energy and so much time into crafting this video about how to write the perfect blog post. It'll show you how to do the research, how to create the outline that will keep people engaged throughout the article to have people staying on the article. Something that's hugely important if you want to make more with ads and affiliate links because you need them to stay there for a while in order for you to make money with ads and to get them to click over to your affiliate links. So I teach you all that and a lot of other stuff in that video. There's a link in the description and you can see the video thumbnail here. And something else you need to keep in mind when we're talking about the perfect length of a blog post is to never try too hard to make an article longer. Many times I can still reduce 10-15% fluff from articles I get from my writers. Whenever you start to struggle to meet the word count or it's just getting harder now to really add more value to the article, you either need to stop or find an additional subheading, find something else, another aspect about it in order to add more length to this article. It's so important that you just stop before you start adding fluff. If you feel like the readers would enjoy this article more if it was maybe 15 or 20% shorter, then you need to shorten it down and just have more shorter sentences to make it easier for people to read it. But really all that formatting stuff is also something I go over in this other video I linked to in the description. So you might also be wondering if you can go longer, if it could potentially hurt your SEO wise, if you have a super long article. And I'd say it like this, if you feel like you're really in the zone and you have so much more to offer, you have more value, even though it might be to some people a pretty tiny topic, but you just happen to know a lot about it. And you feel like you can take this article to three, 4,000 words. If it's easy to write and if you just feel like going on and you have so much more to add to it, by all means go on because in that case you're probably still adding value and you'll have a longer article that will rank for more related searches because you'll definitely cover more ground in such an article and you'll be able to rank for a bigger variety of search phrases. So do that but stop as soon as you start struggling with it. So sometimes it makes a lot of sense to write very long articles. If you're confident that people are looking for a lot of information or if they're looking for a lot of different things and you can sort of guide them with the table of content to that right part of the article. Also because now that Google is live with this passage based ranking, which basically means that Google is getting better at picking out a little 
bit of information inside your article and showing that to the searchers. But you need to have a pretty good feeling that people actually are looking for all the stuff that you put into this article. Don't just write longer in order to beat the competition. That's not always how to do it. Even though that's many times what you need to do. As a rule of thumb, you need to write longer articles, but not to have it longer, to cover more ground in that article and just to feature a way better resource for people. I hope it was helpful. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.